thank you, uh, Acting Deputy President. Um, so tonight I'll also add contribution to um, the Senate's consideration of the appropriation bills before it. Uh, as we know, budgets come and go in this place. Some are of great consequence and some less so. And some budgets serve to illustrate a bold vision for our nation's future, whereas others might instead seek to reinforce our progression down a path already decided. Regardless of what type of budget any budget might be, each one gives us an insight into the character of the government which presents it. Each one tells us a great deal about what the government sees as important. There is no doubt that this budget, with some big numbers in it, such as a $213 billion deficit this financial year, with cumulative deficit of $480 billion over the forward estimates. Net debt will blow out to $703 billion this year alone, growing to $966 billion before too long. Gross debt, on the other hand, is forecast to reach $1.7 trillion over the decade. Now, with numbers this large, Acting Deputy President, Australians have a right to wonder and know where the money is going. What does this government see as important? Now, we know that this budget falls flat in the areas that really matter most. We know that it doesn't go far enough to either protect or create jobs, nor does it illustrate a bold vision that our country desperately needs or form part of a comprehensive plan to secure our nation's future economic prosperity. Last week, I had the pleasure of joining Labor's Shadow Minister for Agriculture and Resources, the member for Chifley, out in Gippsland in Victoria. And for those who may have never had the pleasure of visiting Gippsland, uh, it was quite an enjoyable road trip, I must say, and uh, described as many as God's country. The region is famed for the quality of its agricultural products, brimming with lush fields of green where vegetables are grown and cows wander. And as part of our travels with the member for Chifley, we met Sally Jones, an owner of a local dairy farm, Gippsland Jersey. Now, Gippsland Jersey is a small dairy producer with multiple farms across the Gippsland region. It was founded by Sally with the mission of supporting smaller family farms by paying them a fairer farm price for their milk, sidestepping the major processes. Now, from humbling beginnings, the business has grown to produce not just milk, but cream, butter, yogurt, and other value-added products. And I'd also like to add ice cream. Sally even has plans to produce many other fantastic products in the future. And I guess this is a, a great example of small business doing great things for their local community and for the region. And I'd like to see governments on both sides of uh, the political persuasion to support businesses like this, especially in the regions. Madam Acting Deputy President, Gippsland Jersey is a quintessential Australian success story and Sally and her team have very, and should be very proud of themselves and have much to offer. Businesses like hers are those which we in this place ought to be supporting. Businesses like hers should be able to count on the Australian government for support especially in the middle of a recession. I mean, there is so much opportunity in Gippsland and for primary producers, and they need to be encouraged to value add what they produce, to keep the farmland in the hands of Australians and keep profits in the pockets of regional Australia. Unfortunately, this budget is one that leaves far too many people behind. And as I mentioned earlier, budgets speak to the character of the governments that deliver them. So we shouldn't be too surprised to see a budget that leaves people behind because this government
has always left people behind, unfortunately. If you need more proof of this, go and speak to the many timber workers of my home state, particularly those who have been, um, who have been impacted by the uncertainty surrounding the Central Highlands Regional Forestry Agreement. Madam Acting Deputy President, I have spoken to these timber workers, I have visited and had a lot to say. And again, last week, the member for Chifley and I visited Australian Sustainable Hardwoods in Hayfield, a world-class sustainable timber mill. Ash, as it is better known, is a mighty business, world-class in fact. The scale and sophistication of its operations are something that we should all be impressed about, and any Australian who might have the opportunity to witness it should go down there and pay a visit. Whilst Ash has worked hard to build itself into the success business it is today, it has often had to struggle as a result of the lack of support from this government and also that of my home state, Victoria. After all, it is on the watch of this government that their economic future has been thrown into some doubt, whether it is through the lack of work to shore up uh, the regional forestry agreements or the bungling of relationship with one of our most important trading partners which has seen quality Australian timber turned away on the tarmac. One is left to wonder, Madam Acting De Deputy President, what do the folks at Gippsland Jersey and Australian Sustainable Hardwood get out of the biggest budget blowout in our time? What money is heading their way to support them and to grow their future? Heavens, don't we know that this government likes to talk about its economic credentials? And as we heard earlier from Senator Watt, you know, even earlier today, the government continues on as if there is nothing wrong. Don't we know how they like to tell us that they're good economic managers? Tell that to the additional 160,000 people who are going to join the jobless queues by Christmas. Tell that to the 2,000 Qantas workers who are about to lose their jobs. Tell that to the thousands who are going to have their job keeper ripped out from under them or the thousands who are going to find their bills hard to meet as job seeker is slashed. What little support Australians were able to rely on over the course of this year as we experience a once in a century economic downturn, the government came to only offer far too many had already been forced to suffer. We know this government didn't want to implement a wage subsidy and we know they never wanted to raise the rate of New Start to a livable wage. It was pressure from the community, pressure from Labor and others in this place that eventually brought them to the table. And whilst we got ourselves to here and what is the plan for the recovery, and that is the question that we're all been asking, what's the next step? How exactly is this government going to help Australia bounce back? Well, we know we can count on them for one thing. We can count on them to be there for the announcements. This government relies on these announcements for the headlines. They relish the photo opportunity, the media release, the quick interview and the social media post. What they don't relish is the delivery. What they can't be counted on for is to do the actual things that matter to most Australians. The doing. Take the shortages in our horticulture industry as one example. There is the government, those opposite, both national and liberal, unveiling a new pot of money and a half-page plan. Day one, all is well. The announceable is a success. The media mentioned locked in. Go back on day two, day 20, day 200. All the flashy subsidies are still there. As shiny as the day, they'll be un as they were un unveiled because they barely have been used. The thousands of new workers that were promised turn out to only number in dozens. But by the time the roadshow has moved on to the next announcement and the one after, the problems still persist, with the homework, the hard work of service delivery left undone. But don't take my word for it. Go and speak to the many farmers in my home state. The broccoli farmers in South Gippsland, the strawberry farmers in Queensland, they'll tell you. Good luck finding the solutions, though, because they can't, and they are desperately needing people to pick the harvest 
as we enter over the next period in summer. And you won't find it because these are Australians that have been left behind. They, they have a problem too hard, one that government would rather be, that would rather be forgotten. And they're not alone. They're not the only ones that the government has left behind. At a time when so many Australians are in need and so many industries need a leg up, this government is missing in action. Last week, I also met with representatives of the Gippsland Food and Fibre and visited a local business in Locke, the Locke Brewery and Distillery. And the folks at, the, at Locke Brewery and Distillery have created a fine local business set in a very picturesque regional village. And they're a success, starting with a still you could fit on this desk, now having just one about as big as your living room. No one can say that they're not having a go, but they are having a go. They've gone from making beer to making whiskey to making gins and even their own Negroni. But are they getting a go? They're the kind of people that we ought to be backing, and yet the government can often make their lives harder with taxation obligations and other measures that get in the way of them doing what they do best. Sure, they're being grateful to have JobKeeper, and many businesses have, a scheme of merit that we on this side also supported. But now, what is the plan beyond JobKeeper? What is the plan beyond JobSeeker? What is the plan for jobs and getting this country back on track, getting our economy moving again? What is the plan for regional Australia? We need a, ro a roadmap going forward, a government with vision and one that isn't afraid to put in the hard yards to get the outcomes our country desperately needs. Sadly, all that's going right now is a shiny media release and a whole bunch of debt. At the end of the day, Australians deserve better, and they really do need a government that's going to be on their side. 